the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. Today is Sunday, January 10th, 2021. And I'm just going to talk for a little bit. I had an outline from the last few weeks, which I threw out. It uh, doesn't seem appropriate. I think everybody is feeling about the same thing, no matter which side of the political aisle you're on. Um, last week's events were tragic for our democracy, uh, inappropriate, illegal, whatever. Uh, shocking. Uh, for me, not maybe as shocking as for others. But all that being said, what is the real problem here? Take off your political hat for a minute, and I'll do the same, and just give me a few moments. I'm going to keep this one short. I do not believe this is a political problem. I do not believe this is a Democrat problem, a Republican problem, an Antifa problem, a Trump problem. I think it's a socioeconomic problem that's been building for a long time. As I mentioned before, I believe we missed it 40 years ago, and I'm very serious about that. I think that in the middle of the country, where I still have all of my family, my my family, all my relatives, um, I don't believe anybody's more than a few hundred miles from where where we grew up in in southern Louisiana, southern and central Louisiana. And and I've been traveling back there since I left when I was 18 years old, and quite literally nothing has changed. Now, they say they like it like that. And I actually appreciate that. I appreciate that more now than I did when I was younger. Um, There's something nice about things being the same. Um, I can go there and I don't feel the pressures and the, uh, you know, the things that I feel in in Los Angeles. I certainly don't feel them in Louisiana. Uh, You can breathe. Um, You, you know, wide open spaces. And all of that. And again, I was raised a very, very conservative by a very conservative family. My dad is a Vietnam veteran, so I really do understand more than I think I'm given credit. But here's the thing: there really is a problem in the non-coastal cities. I would say, you know, outside of the San Francisco, Los Angeles, uh, New York City, Boston, uh, Chicago metro areas, it, it tails off really rapidly in terms of, you know, you can just see it in the countryside. You, I took a road trip a few years ago and just drove across the middle of the country. I hadn't done this in a very long time, more than a decade. And there just isn't a whole lot going on. And I can see how if you've never left, if I would have lived out my last, you know, 30 years, basically, in that environment and just saw it deteriorate and deteriorate. And in the media, and I'm talking about, I'm not talking about in BC, I'm talking about in the programming that you see on television from Hollywood and all of this, you know, opulence and excess. And, and look, it's very real. Uh, there is a lot of that. I, it creates an expectation. It creates uh, an, an image of what you're missing out on. Right. Fear of missing out, that whole thing. Well, I mentioned decades and decades of that. I can imagine decades and decades of that um, becomes critical at some point. Right. And it, it isn't even anymore that you're looking to become what you see on television. You can't even find your way to pay the rent. Right. You, you don't have money for even the most basic things. And I think that 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 really has gotten markedly worse probably in the last 20 years, certainly the last 10 years. But I think the major sl- slide started about 20 years ago. So, you know, politics at this stage of this democracy really is such a mature system that, you know, what has happened with Trumpism, what, whatever you think of it, I don't want to get into that here I, my views are very clear, but I'm tr- really trying to understand all sides of this. If it becomes a symptom, it's not a cause. You know, as much as I would like to blame everything, p- me personally would like to blame everything on Trump and Trumpism, that's not, it's not intellectually honest. Because the real issue is a socioeconomic erosion in the country and lack of opportunity. So 
if you are not a farmer, if you're not a miner, if you're not working in a warehouse job, because pretty much that's all being hollowed out. You know, the corner store is gone. Uh, it's all big business like Amazon. So all you have are like warehouse jobs and that. I mean, that's and then you're watching the same stories about success and all these wonderful things that happen in these cities that you don't live in. Um, at some point it cracks, right? And I think that's really what we saw. Now, did I think that, you know, in the year 2021, I would be talking about this and then trying to connect it to ASM? No, no, that would be dishonest to say that. I always felt that there was something big here. That's why, in spite of all these difficulties, that the few people that remain, no matter what, in the core team never leave is that, you know, just that feeling inside there really is something here. I think that's more important now than it's ever been. I don't know what to do with that yet. Other than, as I've said, get this uh, book published, which was supposed to be this past summer and move it to this coming summer, uh, get press on it and all that to find our first uh, public league fundraise. That's a, that's a tactical issue. Um, You know, how to get, in front of just one candidate, because it's really, for us, it's that. It really is. Please hear me. There is only one thing standing between where we are now and everything we've ever wanted this to be, and that is just being able to showcase a single public fundraise. I do believe that what I've learned over the last decades in marketing and PR, combined with what I learned from Jeff Hazlett, that I can get that done through publishing a book and publicizing that book. But back to the bigger issue. Real opportunity needs to come to the middle. Not not just the middle. Basically, it needs to be portable, right? So what we've learned from, I think, this COVID-19, one of the many things, there's there's more lessons than than I can count. But I think the, the portability of work, the ability to take your job wherever you want, companies being able to do that, uh, allow their employees because most people are knowledge workers, at least at the high end of the scale, they certainly are. They work on notebook computers. They don't, they don't use their hands. Okay. They use their, they use their minds and they use their, their fingers or their voices or some combination of that. I think that that has been shown viable now, which, which will allow the society to spread out uh, you know, you don't have to live in Los Angeles. You don't have to live in San Francisco. Uh, you can you can go physically wherever you want. Now, listen, I know this works because I've been doing this for 20, more than 20 years, but the average person has not. So if you can go live where you want and still make the income because it's, it's done through electronic means, then that's going to help a great deal. It's going to allow the population to spread out across the land and... Uh, not be concentrated in these expensive urban centers where, frankly, I don't think most people even want to live. I mean, you know, I don't think everybody wants to live in those urban centers. So that's already happening. But beyond that, there needs to be something that, in that portability that is is happening in the knowledge space, it needs to be more universal. So our proposition has been that you know sports is pervasive sports is is everywhere and that by growing sports through investing in it creating a new way of investing in it that you could do that because that it doesn't matter where you are right it doesn't matter where the the sports league is and it also doesn't matter where the trader is so both of those sides of the equation can be moved around right You can build a sports league in Texas that people are trading contracts on in the Congo. Or you can build a soccer league in the Congo and trade the sports shares in Texas. That kind of universal portability. Um, This is the core value proposition of everything that we're doing, is creating that environment where, you know, I, I understand now that it has to be it has to be simple and it has to be universal. So sports is universal, almost universal, and it's very, pretty simple for most people to understand. 
maybe the instrument, our instrument itself is not, but, but the idea of being able to invest in sports teams and build, if nothing else, they know it from stadiums that have maybe have been built nearby or in their hometowns, right? There's a bond issue or something like that to build a new stadium. So it, it makes sense to people that if you, if you, I remember when I was in there, I was, I was actually in Arizona when the Diamondbacks uh, came to town. Uh, it was very, I have a brick on my desk actually from that um, back in 1998 a brick in the uh, in the foundation, a commemorative brick. It says "Never give up on it." Um, I I remember how big of a deal that was, how to get it financed, and the excitement that it created. In fact, I even moved into a downtown apartment just to be close to the stadium when it when it started up. So I saw a baseball league come to town, and I saw what it did, and and all of that. So I think everybody gets that. Um, they either have had it happen in the town where they live, or maybe it's it's being talked about, right? So I, that is the core thing. I, you know, in my vision of what all this means and why I fight for it so hard is that any group of people or individual or corporation or whatever that can put together a viable plan to develop and uh, market a sports league could put that on all sports market and raise capital and gain, gain fans from all over the world. Okay. This is not going to be accomplished by sports gambling. It's just not going to happen. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. You don't bring <laughs> anyway, that's a, for another time. Invest versus bet. Invest versus gamble. Okay, I, I beat that drum to death. Back to the core issue here. So those, those new teams, leagues, that could be basically built anywhere, generating customers any, everywhere in the world. Because with the Internet now, which, which, which did not exist when ASM was originally conceived, not to this level, it literally doesn't matter where the team is. I mean, all you need is to be able to live stream. You don't even need to be able to live stream the games. You just need the scores, right? But ultimately, even just the technology for live streaming has come so far so fast that you can practically uh, do it with your phone, broadcast quality. In fact, that you can do broadcast quality with some phones. So the, all of that, just it, it's... There's an ecosystem there that is nothing like that's ever existed. I mean, again, imagine a, 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 t, a, a guy gets an idea and, or a gal gets an idea in the Congo for a soccer league and can put together a, a proposal, put it on the market, and then gain, gain the financing and, and the fans from everywhere in the world. And then it just... It's mind-boggling to me what potential that will create. And then on top of that, you have all of the industries that will build up around it. And, you know, if you put a, um, even if it's a small sports league, you're still going to have concessions. You're still going to have all kinds of fan gear and all these businesses that will spring up around it. So that is why, uh, you know, none of us at the core, and the, the core grows and, and shrinks depending on how exciting it is. At the time, sometimes it grows to, you know, 20 people and other times it's only five or six people. But those core, the core group knows that this is just one example away from a reality. And I think at this point in time with uh, the turmoil that you're seeing, this turmoil is not going to be solved by electing a different person. OK, or it's not a person problem. It's not we got the wrong politician or we picked the wrong party. Um, and I say that as a strong partisan, which I make no apology for, but I can take that hat off and then back away and say, that's not the real problem. <laughs> Regardless of my views on wh what government size should be and, and all of this policy prescription stuff, I know that's not the real problem. The real problem is the I call it the lie. The American dream is, is a lie. And actually, it's been a lie for a while. It's just not obtainable for most people unless they are, uh, you know, they have these head starts, uh, whatever they are. You know, they've got rich parents or they got really lucky or in my case, we had a, 
a school system that, because I was in accelerated learning programs from very early, which I didn't, I, you know, you're a kid, you don't understand that stuff. But I didn't know that the federal funding was, you know, for every one of us they could put in a class, they got a lot of money. I think at the time it was something like sixteen or $17,000 a year for me. That's what they got for me just to be sitting in the class uh, from, the, from the federal government. So I didn't know the incentive structures and how they worked. But the, anyway, point is, if you're not, if you don't have those head starts and you're trying to, you, you see these projections you're given through television and everything of what you can be, but you never, it's just never happens, right? It just never happens. That's the reason what happened this past week happened. Now, was it egged on by your responsible behavior? In my opinion, absolutely 1,000%. But you couldn't even find any footing for that unless something was legitimately wrong. It just wouldn't happen. So the point is, this is not a political problem. Not in terms of a candidate, okay? It is a political problem in terms of a policy prescription. So that's what we're about. That's what the sports vote is. That's the message. It's not about me. It's not about Alper. It's not about Chad. It's not about the rest of the guys working on this. It's not about any of that. It's about putting sports investment out front as a new source of opportunity so that this kind of thing won't happen. Not because you're in the wrong try. It's not a try. The tribal warfare is not going to stop until the core problem is solved. It may go into remission. It may be, um, you know, you won't hear about it for a little while, but it's still there, it, you know. So if you want that to, to go away, you have to actually fix the, the real problem, which is the lack of opportunity. That's the lack, I would call it the lack of portable opportunity. Opportunity that can be gained anywhere by anyone who just has the, 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 the drive to, to put together a plan and market that plan. An ecosystem inside of sports, which will allow both the creation of new leagues and new fans anywhere on the planet. That is what we are doing here. And it's just one step. Everything else has been done. It's one single step. We have to cast the net as wide as we possibly can to find a single candidate to allow us to showcase a fundraise and publicize that. And I'm telling you, that will turn the key on everything. So if you want to help us do that, then please do. I mean, whatever that is, contribute ideas contribute to any of the programs, whatever, whatever you can do, please do pass the petition around. There's a resource list now on the ASM notice board where I'm going to consolidate all the links where, uh, you can see if it's not on that list, it's not under our control. Okay. The things that we're doing will be in that list. Find something in there that you can be a part of and, and help us out because I'm telling you, that's all we need to do. That's what the book uh, publication is about. You know, it's a way of, um, because I saw Jeff do this. You know, a book acts as an anchor. I mean, just just watch the TV shows, especially the political shows. Everybody's pitching a book. Okay, so I know how to get into that system. The point is, it gives us a reference manual, but mainly it starts the conversation and it brings that uh, one candidate to our door so that we can show every, because I know that when we show the world what this thing can really do, configured exactly as it was intended, that the dam will break. So I won't take up any more of your time. I can always tell when everybody's distracted by events because the volume goes down uh, on ASM, um, goes down when, when, when people are not paying attention. And I know everybody's focused on um, on what's gone on in the past few days and as they should be. So uh, I won't take up any more of your time than this. Uh, thank you very much. And please do stay safe with your friends and your family. Bye now.